a very warm welcome to our service today. Last week, we thought about Jesus' baptism and those special words of affirmation from God to Jesus, words which remind us that we too are everlastingly loved by God. Today, our theme is God's call. Our first hymn takes us to the Old Testament and to the story of Samuel, of how God first spoke to him as he was sleeping in the temple where he lived. And we shall be hearing that story in our first reading today. transform us and renew our lives. Let's pray it together. Almighty God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace, and in the renewal of our lives make known your heavenly glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue by saying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now Valerie is going to read our first reading. Our first reading today is taken from the book of Samuel, chapter 3, starting at verse 1. The Lord appears to Samuel. In those days, when the boy Samuel was serving the Lord under the direction of Eli, there were very few messages from the Lord and visions from him were very rare. One night, Eli, who was now almost blind, was sleeping in his own room, and Samuel was sleeping in the sanctuary, where the sacred covenant box was. Before dawn, while the lamp was still burning, the Lord called to Samuel, and he answered, Yes, sir, and ran to Eli and said, You called me, and here I am. But Eli answered, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. So Samuel went back to bed. The Lord called Samuel again. The boy did not know what, that it was the Lord. 
because the Lord had never spoken to him before. So he got up, went to Eli, and said, You called me, here I am, sir. But Eli answered, My son, I didn't call you, go back to bed. The Lord called Samuel a third time. He got up and went to Eli and said, You called me, here I am. Then Eli realised that it was the Lord who was calling the boy. So he said to him, Go back to bed, and if he calls you again, say, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went back to bed. The Lord came and stood there and called as he had before, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel answered, Speak, your servant is listening. The Lord said to him, Some day I am going to do something to the people of Israel that is so terrible that everyone who hears about it will be stunned. On that day I will carry out all my threats against Eli's family, from beginning to end. I have already told him that I am going to punish his family because his sons have spoken evil things against me. Eli knew they were doing this, but he did not stop them. So I solemnly declare to the family of Eli that no sacrifice or offering will ever be able to remove the consequences of this terrible sin. Samuel stayed in bed until morning. Then he got up, opened the doors of the house of the Lord. He was afraid to tell Eli about the vision. Eli called him, Samuel, my boy. Yes, sir, Samuel answered. What did the Lord tell you? Eli asked. Don't keep anything from me. God will punish you severely if you don't tell me everything. He did not keep anything back. Eli said, He is the Lord. He will do whatever seems best to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him and made everything that Samuel had cut, said come true. So all the people of Israel from one end of the country to the other knew that Samuel was indeed a prophet of the Lord. The Lord continued to reveal himself at Shiloh where he had appeared to Samuel and had spoken to him. And when Samuel spoke, all Israel listened. Here endeth the reading. I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I, who made the stars of night, I will make the darkness bright, who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go. If you lead me, I will hold your people in my heart. I, the Lord of snow and rain, I have borne my people's pain. I have wept for love of them, they turn away. I will break their hearts of stone, give them hearts for love alone. I will speak my word to them, whom shall I send? Here I Is I, Lord, I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me, I will hold your peace.
people in my heart. Our New Testament reading is taken from John chapter 1, beginning at verse 43. Jesus calls Philip and Nathanael. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, come with me. Philip was from Bethsaida, the town where Andrew and Peter lived. Philip found Nathanael and told him, we have found the one who Moses wrote about in the law and whom the prophets also wrote about. He is Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Can anything good come from Nazareth? Nathanael replied. Come and see, answered Philip. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming, he said about him, Here is a real Israelite. There is nothing false in him. Nathanael asked him, How do you know me? Jesus answered, I saw you when you were under the fig tree, before Philip called you. Teacher, answered Nathanael, You are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus said, do you believe just because I told you I saw you under a fig tree? You will see much greater things than this. And he said to them, I am telling you the truth. You will see heaven open and God's angels going up and coming down on the Son of Man. Here endeth the reading. I've always loved the story of Samuel ever since I first heard it, when I think it must have been when I was quite young and at primary school. I loved it then because it was a story that showed a child getting it right and a grown up getting it wrong. In my world at that time, grown ups always seemed to be right and I quite often seemed to get things wrong. It's also one of many stories in the Bible about how God calls and uses all sorts of people and not just the likely ones so that he can get his message across that he loves and cares for his people and wants the best for them. Here's a desperate woman and a little boy, people with no power or authority and they restore God's prophetic voice to his temple. It's a story about God's calling and our response and that's why it's been paired with our gospel reading today about the calling of Philip and Nathaniel as disciples of Jesus. So what can we learn from the story about hearing and responding to God's call? In the book of Samuel, we're given a picture of a society where people don't seem to expect the presence of the word of God. Indeed, we're told the word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. In Old Testament times, priesthood was a family business. And before our reading begins, it's already clear that Eli, the priest's family, was a disgrace. His sons, who ought to have been stepping into his shoes as their father grew old, were just out of control. And God had told him so, but he seemed unable or unwilling to do anything about it. In chapter 1, when Hannah, Samuel's mother, comes to the temple in deep distress because she has no children and is praying desperately, Eli at first assumes she's drunk and he scolds her. When he realises his mistake, he prays a blessing on her. God hears her prayer and his and gives her a son, Samuel, who she dedicates to God and brings to live in the temple under Eli's care. This brings us to the beginning of today's reading when Samuel is settling down for the night in his usual place, right near the Ark of God, the holiest place. So if Samuel is a model for us, what can we learn from what happens next? Firstly, 
Samuel is in listening mode. Although he's settled down for the night, he's still alert to the possibility that Eli might need him. So when he hears a voice calling, he responds straight away. Second, Samuel needs help and guidance to understand that it's God who's calling him. Despite all his failings, Eli gives that help, although he doesn't offer to wait with Samuel and see if the voice calls again. Third, Samuel follows Eli's guidance, and the next time the voice calls, he replies, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Finally, the message is difficult, and it makes Samuel afraid, because it's a message announcing God's punishment for Eli and his family. But Samuel delivers it faithfully, and thus begins his ministry as a great prophet and a leader of God's people. God's voice is heard again. Last week, we were thinking about God's everlasting love for us, about how through Jesus' death and resurrection, we are freed to live in the power of the Holy Spirit. We're not all called to be prophets and leaders like Samuel, or apostles like Philip and Nathaniel, nor should we expect to literally hear voices speaking to us. But God still wants to communicate with us. He wants us to know how much we're loved, and he calls us too to follow him. There are many ways of hearing from God, through reading and reflecting on the Bible, through spending time in God's creation, in times of quiet prayer, as we gather to worship together when we can, or through the words and deeds of other Christians. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. I'm going to read again the words that Angela used towards the end of her prayers last week. When the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flocks, the work of Christmas begins. To find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among the people, to make music in the heart. God calls us all. Are we willing, like Samuel and Philip and Nathaniel in their different ways, to listen and to follow? Amen. Amen. Now we're going to sing Just As I Am, a hymn in which we offer ourselves to God. You might want to make it a prayer. Yeah. 
and light, sight, riches, healing of the mind. In all I need, in thee to find. Just as I am, thou wilt receive, wilt welcome, pardon, cleanse, relieve. We come now to God who loves us so much to confess that we don't always live our lives in response to his call. We say together, Lord our God, in our sin we have avoided your call. Our love for you is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Have mercy on us, deliver us from judgment, bind up our wounds and revive us. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God of love bring you back to himself, forgive you your sins, and assure you of his eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We're now going to affirm together our faith in the risen Lord Jesus who calls us to follow him. We say together, Christ, Christ died, died for our sins, sins in, in accordance with the scriptures. He was, he was buried, buried. He was, he was raised, raised to life on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received, and this we believe. Amen. Now, Janet is going to lead our intercessions. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Let us pray. We pray for our own clergy and for all who are leading, ministering or being prepared for ordination and ministry at home here and in all countries around the world. May we as your servants be prepared to follow you, living our lives to provide those around us with support for their Christian belief. Give us the strength we need through your spirit to live as children of God for Christ's sake. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guard and strengthen your servant Elizabeth, our Queen, keeping her safe, that she may put her trust in you and seek your honour and glory Guide the leaders of all nations in the way of peace and justice, granting them your inspiration in these times of great concern. We ask you to watch over the people of the USA and we pray that they cope peacefully with the transition of government. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help and comfort the lonely, the bereaved and oppressed, and provide for the homeless, the hungry, and the destitute. We remember those who are ill at home or in hospital, and all who are struggling at this time, whether it be confusion and doubt in education, loss of employment, or those supporting or caring for close friends or relatives. We ask for your blessing on all in Burlington Hall and Devon Lodge. 
bless the wonderful carers in those and all homes. Give them courage and patience to carry out their tasks. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those working so hard in the NHS and all who are keeping frontline services going for the comfort and safety of the rest of us. We include Cathy Kappa, Simon and Sharon Scott, Jenny McCarville, Emily Hayward, Katie Goff and Zoe. We thank you for the improved health of Nigel Boston, for whom we have been praying. We name in our prayers today Harry Banks, Christine Alexander, Maureen Phillips, Pat Jeffrey, John and Doreen Trumper, and Stephen, Carol and David Hibbard. But we do not forget all those whom we do not know. We ask for your blessing on the family of Guy Hinks, grieving since his recent death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The baptised Jesus identifies fully with us humans. There is nothing we go through that Jesus doesn't know. We love you, Lord, above all things, and wish to receive you, through Jesus, into our souls. And as we, like Samuel, listen for your voice calling us, never permit us to be separated from you. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. as this unseen and admit to what I mean in you and you in me Let us pray Keep us, good Lord under the shadow of your mercy in this time of uncertainty and distress Sustain and support the anxious and fearful, and lift up all who are brought low, that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love, in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. 